So this is a short video to show the CompuKit UK109, as I call it. It's a modified um, CompuKit UK101, which I modified back in about 2004, and I quite honestly haven't touched the thing for about 10 years. Uh, I've taken it to various maker fairs, and I've taken it to the Vintage Computer Festival at Bletchley Park in 2010. Mm, that's 11 years ago. Um, but recently I heard about Retro Challenge, and so I got the thing uh, set up and did some work on it for that Retro Challenge. Um, so let's have a look at the machine. Uh, this is the CompuKit keyboard. It's exactly as original. It even has a broken key, key stalk here. The, the keycap's around somewhere. Um, so that's got to get glued back on there. Um, it had originally a 6502 processor in this socket, and in about 2004 I built this adapter, a little blue PCB you can see there as a prototyping board, a bit of Vero board, um, some pins going into the 6502 socket, and on top a socket containing a 6809. Um, next to it we've got some ROMs, these are EEPROMs, the original CompuGet EEPROMs, apart from that one, which is modified code, and this one, which is 6809 modified code. This is the, what the CompuKit calls the monitor ROM. We call it the BIOS, I think, nowadays. It's got all the code to scroll the screen, to operate the keyboard, to work the serial port. There's a 6850 serial chip down here. Um, all the stuff you need to make the machine go is, is in this, this ROM. Over here we have the infamous 2114's memory. This is 4K of static memory. Four bits in this one, four bits in that one, um, and then one K, so there's four of them, four, four pairs. Over here, the video circuit, this is the current generator. The rest of the board is all video circuitry. This is, this is all to make the video signal, which I've got rigged up to a green screen monitor. It's 16 rows of 48 characters. It's the standard stuff for a CompuKit. These two 2114 memory chips here are the... Um, video memory. Um, now, when I put it away, of course, it worked. I got it out the other day, dug it out from under a pile of other stuff. It didn't work, so I found out eventually that this pin here on the EEPROM isn't making good contact somewhere in the in the socket, so this little wire is compensating for that. Well, <clears throat> I think it's time to turn the damn thing on. Um, it doesn't have a power at reset. The get didn't have a power at reset. And this machine hasn't been modified to include one. So when I switch it on, you will see on the um, green screen monitor a whole bunch of random garbage. And the switch over here, this isn't the original power supply, this is a replacement power supply. The original supply had a rather inadequate heat sink over here, uh, rather inadequate um, cooling, couldn't supply enough current, really, uh, especially if you put all the memories in. So this is a modern power supply. Switch on. And, yep, sure enough, it comes up on the green screen monitor there with just random garbage in the um, video memory. So if I hold down the two reset keys on the keyboard, it resets. Fantastic. There we go. I was going to zoom this in a bit so that um, we didn't look at the machine so much now as look at the, the screen display. So let's have a look at the screen display of this thing. There we go. Let's lock that off again. There we go. So this is what the machine comes up with. Um, it tells you that it's a 6809 CPU. It doesn't detect the, the, the CPU type. It just, just prints the message. Um, oh dear, it's not going into focus. Um, it also has 2021 here, the date. I've modified the code in the ROM to print... 2021. Uh, just to prove to myself that I made the modification, really. Uh, it's saying that the RAM is failing, and indeed I have got at that address a bad 2114 memory. Oh well, these things fail occasionally. Um, it can't do very much. It has a machine code monitor, which it's come up into now. I can type R, and it will show the contents, so we've got the contents of the 6809's A and B registers. There's X, Y, the user stack pointer and the system stack pointer. They're all zero. 
um, they're just being picked up from, um, from, from, from RAM. If you typed G to make it go, it would load those values into the registers, run your little piece of code, and when it returns, you'd be able to see what had happened to those registers. Now, I haven't got any way at the moment of putting a program into the machine other than typing it in byte by byte in hex, which I don't fancy doing right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to not do that. I'm just going to use stuff which is in the ROM. Uh, in the ROM, we've got in the monitor, uh, you type A and it prints 5A, type B, A5. That's, that's just, I think, something I wrote years ago um, to test the hex conversion routines that I had put into the ROM. The whole, the whole of the, the ROM is written from scratch by me, um, I say years ago, and some of this stuff is test, um, test testing that, that ROM. Um, v is quite good, if I type V, it shows the CompuKit character set. This is the original CompuKit um, character ROM in this thing. Uh, you can see it's got the normal ASCII A, B, C through the middle there, but when it gets to this point, it's got the curly bracket and the pipe sign in the wrong order. I don't know why it did that. Um, it then goes into this character graphic mode, into this block graphics mode. And down the bottom here you've got some Greek letters. Up at the top in the control character sequence you've got this little thing in the middle of a racing car and you've got a little house and a hotel for playing Monopoly. I don't know if anyone actually wrote a Monopoly program for this thing, but it was possible. You had a house and a hotel. I think, I think that's what they're for. Uh, there's a pound sign there. Some useful arrows that you can spin. Um, a useful row across here of uh, each scan line of the character separately available and also vertically. Um, so you could do sort of graph drawing. Um, I was going to make it do. We can get it to um, show us. Oh, this is some box drawing stuff that I wrote. So it's it's drawing boxes on the screen. You see, the outer one is just a line in the line drawing graphics, and there's some in, inside that. We've got some other ones that look a little bit like they've got window decorations on. Something I was just playing around with years ago. Um, not terribly useful at the moment. Um, but the, the, there is one interesting thing that I did do, um, and I took this to the Maker Fairs and to the Vintage Computer Festival. It seemed to be quite popular, and with a green screen monitor, I think this one looks rather good. Um, now, I, I got the idea, could I do a matrix screensaver? Remember the matrix screensavers? So I did a matrix screensaver for the CompuKit. And with the green screen, I think that, that actually looks quite good. Let's make it do that again. There we go, get it to clear the screen to begin with, and then off it goes. It's fairly rudimentary. You've got um, 48 columns across the screen, and you've got 16 rows. And it looks best, I think, when it starts up like that. Um, and it hasn't completely filled the screen. Of course, the real uh, matrix um, screensaver or the real, the real matrix um, special effect itself from the film, um, it would occasionally put blanks in the columns and it occasionally stop and start again. Also in the film, uh, the, 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 there were some characters would show up brighter than others. Now, I can't control the brightness. This is only a, a pure black and white VDU, uh, so I can't do anything about that. But I think it looks okay. The CompuKit characters, the, particularly the, the Greek letters which show up in there occasionally, I think it looks all right. For an 8-bit machine that was built originally, the CompuKit was built in 1979. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's over 40 years old now. Anyway, th there we have it. That's that reset again. Um, that is pretty much there we go. Um, pretty much um, all it can can do at the moment. I've got myself into a state now where I can assemble and blow blow eproms and erase the eproms again 
and the machine works. So I, I'm in a position where I can do some more work on this thing. And I would like to get some more things working on this machine. I'd like to do more with the graphics. I've got some ideas for doing a 48 by 32 bitmapped graphics display for this thing. Uh, again, using those block character graphics. Um, it would be quite fun to get the uh, serial port working and be able to load programs into the machine, although they'd only go in at 300 board, because it's fixed board rate. Um, it might be nice to be able to write a game for it, something like that, all in 6809 assembler. Um, we'll have to see what... Um, what kind of ideas I can come up with. Anyway, so there we have it. That's the UK109, the UK101 with a modified 6809 processor uh, and a quick demo video there for Retro Challenge. <laughs>